Hey guys, it's Legendary Narwhal back again, and today we're doing our first class ramblings. Um, I'm not sure why they're killing each other. Um, we're doing our first class ramblings on the Infiltrator today. So, we're going to get right into how the Infiltrator plays in this game, and then after that, um, if that's all you're here for, then, you know, obviously you're welcome to close the video whenever you'd like. But I will be continuing on with my personal thoughts on this and a comparison to the infiltrating system in the original Planicide after I go over all of this. And that'll kind of be my role for most of these class ramblings. But for now, if we go in here... So let me see where we are. We are... basically in a good combat zone because I was playing in fighting here not all that long ago. So, if we look over here, let's head on over here. In this game you have Infiltrator, Light Assault, Combat Medic, Engineer, Heavy Assault, and Max. All the different classes, I will be doing a video for each. So today for the Infiltrator, as you can see, dual weapons. We have the primary weapon of a sniper rifle, right now bolt driver is the only available, and secondary weapon of the mag shot pistol. Again, right now it's the only one that is available. Everyone has a knife. Um, I believe there will be multiple different kinds of melee weapons that are in the game. However, right now we're stuck with the mag cutter, which is similar to the blade in the original game. Um, if you take a look at it right here, so in the original game, swinging a knife, you had a default swing, and then you had a secondary mode that did a lot more damage but generated noise. Now, in this game, let's see, I think it's T, yeah, um, the motion of knifing, as you can see, probably still needs some work. I don't think it's supposed to be that quick. However, you do have a knife. It does decent damage. I haven't been going around knifing people, so I wouldn't be able to tell you off the top of my head how much that does. But it's painful. It's very painful. So, in addition to that, we have the standard ability of the Infiltrator, which is a cloak. Now, there are multiple cloaks that you can get. Right now, if I go in here, let me go to Classes, Infiltrator, Certs suit mod cloaking devices sorry so right now you cannot get any of these cloaking devices in the beta none of these are in none of these are available for testing as you can see 999,999 certification points um maybe if you actually accumulate that much somehow you would be able to click this however i have a feeling that you could not so Right now, the default infiltrator cloak is essentially already here, the cloaking device. This is basically what you already have, to, uh, to my knowledge. So, right here, it just increases the amount of time that you can go. Recharge rate, recharge rate, maximum charge capacity. So, the one thing that you want to note about the cloaking for this particular cloak, your basic one, is right here, this increases the maximum charge capacity, meaning you can cloak for longer. The second two do not do that, so you can only upgrade the length of the duration of your cloak essentially once. The other two will simply increase how quickly you can cloak again after coming back out. These will help you recharge quicker. Um, as for the reinforced camouflage, basically you take less damage when you are in cloak. Um, at the moment, you cannot fire weapons in a cloak, which you could do in the original. I'm going to try and keep all of my comparisons out for now and only make them later. But I will say that right now, uh, you cannot fire while you are cloaked. So this is essentially just you were seen and you're running away in panic. So reduces the damage, and then again we have recharge rate, we bounce back to reduce damage amount, we bounce back to recharge rate, and then we bounce back to damage reduction. So they make it so that you'll get an even amount across the board, which in my opinion they probably should have done up here. They should have kind of swapped these two around, the recharge and the capacity, but that's fine. Um, you get the cloak and you move faster with this one here, so sprint speed. So keep that in mind. It is not necessarily faster. It says faster in this default tooltip, however, this specifically says sprint. So 
uh, recharge faster, increase sprint speed, again, sprint, keyword, and then another sprint speed. So really quick, if we go out, walking around normally like this, that will most likely not affect it. Holding, for me, it's shift, will engage sprinting. So it sounds like you will be able to sprint quicker, however your normal, I guess, the walk speed, this would be, that is not going to be affected. At least, that is what I gather from this. So, let's go back in. Dash cloak, wraith cloaking device, basically it'll engage faster. So, you can cut things a little bit closer. Um, you will be able to become completely invisible faster. At the moment, there's quite a bit of time where you're shimmering for a bit before you actually become invisible. So, as you can kind of see here, it goes from decreasing the full cloak time to full capacitor, so you can do it for longer. And then, again, back to the first thing, decreasing the full cloak time, back to the capacitor, and then right here, cloaking while on a flash renders both the infiltrator and the vehicle invisible. You cannot use the flash weapons. Basically what this does is, as it says here, wraith cloaking device, this will basically give you the wraith, which was an ATV in the original Planetside 1. Um, there were several ATVs. There was the Basilisk, which had dual chain guns for any infantry. There was the Fury, which had a single anti-vehicle rocket launcher, which I believe could fire in two shot bursts. And there was also the Wraith. It had no guns, so it was purely for transport. However, if you were an infiltrator, if you had the cloaking certifications and you were in an infiltration suit, then when you cloaked on the ATV, it would also stealth the ATV and yourself. That's basically what this is doing. Right here, nano-efficient cloaking device allows you to cloak for extended periods of time. You have larger capacitors on all of the above, however, this seems like it's going to give you a much larger amount just by default. So, cloak for extended period of time, increase the size of the capacitor to lengthen, essentially lengthen that even more, further increase it to lengthen it more, further increase it to lengthen it more, and further increase it to lengthen it more again. Okay? So we're going to come back to this really quickly. We're just going to go over Stalker. So, allows the infiltrator to stay cloaked indefinitely only while stationary. And you can only use sidearms while wearing this. So, what we have here is what the default description was. Cloaking while stationary will not drain the capacitor, and you can only equip sidearms while you wear the suit. Again, same thing, cloaking while stationary will slowly recharge. So now the difference here is this, if you only have this, then you could cloak, walk a few steps, it would drain slightly, yes, because you would be moving, but then you would stop. The drain would stop because you are not moving, however it would not recharge. Here, now, when you are stationary, it will slowly recharge the capacitor, if you have this. Over here, this will allow the use of pistols while you are cloaked. So, basically, the stalker camouflage here, this is the closest that you're going to get to the cloaking certifications in the original game. This is the closest that you'll be able to come. Uh, really quick as a little comparison, in the original Planetside 1, uh, there were no classes, there were only certifications. The Infiltrator certification armor was only two points, two certification points, and that gave you access to it. You had an inventory system in that game that you actually had to manage yourself, kind of an inventory Tetris kind of deal. In this game you don't have that, there are no inventories, you simply have default selections on the side. So, you only had a slot for a handgun, and then you had an inventory space. So, very similar to this, um, only sidearm weapons. You could only use a pistol with it. And you could cloak, run around, it would drain, yeah, as long as you were cloaked and you were moving, but whenever you weren't moving, it would begin to recharge. Anytime you were stationary, it would begin to recharge. So, right here, this is half of it. This is, oh, if I sit still, my cloak won't drain. And this one here is, oh, I stopped moving, slowly recharge. So, and then here, this is the final bit. 
as I stated before, and as you can see here, it's clearly worded, unless you have this, you cannot fire when you are cloaked. You must decloak in order to fire your weapon. In the original game, you could fire while you were cloaked, however, that lit you up like a Christmas tree. You could be seen very, very clearly. Right here, it's, it says that as well. It will increase the visibility of yourself dramatically. But, you can still do it. So, for anyone who wants to go back to the kind of old school cloaking thing, style, whatever you want to call it, of the original game, this is what you're going to want. You're going to want to save up however many points this is worth, and you're going to want to, well, it, it looks like it'll be 15, so you're going to want to spend 15 in order to unlock it. Really, you're going to need 60 the 15 and the 45 in order to get any use out of it and after that 60 you're gonna need a hundred more to be able to actually fight while doing this in a very hostile environment at the moment if you just get these two then you'll have to decloak to shoot and then recloak and run away with this one you won't have to do that now if you combine this all three of these if you combine these along with reinforced camouflage, then you have the makings of a pretty decent setup, because you won't take as much damage while you're cloaked. Now, I will fully admit, since we cannot have these certifications to test them, I'm unaware if reinforced camouflage would go... I'll show you what I'm going to talk about here. So, I'm unaware if here, ability, if this would be reinforced camouflage and then this would be the other and this would be the other meaning that in here if you go meaning that all of these bonuses here to reinforced they would only apply to this it simply says reduce the amount of damage received while cloaked this one specifically says increases the recharge rate of the reinforced camouflage devices capacitor so my belief is you will be able to get this. You'll have to get this in order to keep going and get the second version of this. However, since these simply say damage received while cloaked, I believe that these two, and any that are similar to this, will affect any of the cloak suits you're wearing. Hopefully that'll be the case, because that would make you not very heavily armored, but you'd have a lot more durability than you would already, so that's pretty decent. Um, we're mostly going to stay within the certifications for the rest of this, because all of these are the cloaker certifications. Now, all of these are universal, everybody gets these. I'll go over them here in this video, seeing as this is the first one, but I'm not really going to go over them in detail again in any of the others, just because these are universal. Everyone will get these. So, you can get first aid certs and you can get hand grenade certs. These are going to be universal, anyone can get them. Medical kit grants access to medical kits that can be used to quickly restore a portion of health. If you played the original game, you know that there were med kits. They took up inventory space, you could hit whatever F key that you bound it to in order to quick use it, and it could restore an amount of your health. They had a cooldown period, true, but it was a way that you could restore your health mid-fight without having to switch to a different tool to heal yourself or anything like that. So, the first one just grants access to it. You have that. And then this is just give you another one, give you another one, and give you another one. So it's very simple. So you can carry four total. And then restoration kit, it's essentially the same thing as a med kit. However, this will regenerate health over a period of time. And again, this is carry an extra, carry an extra, and carry an extra. It's my belief, and I haven't been able to test this, seeing as, as you can see, I do not have the restoration kit. However, I believe restoration kit will heal more than the medical kit, simply because this takes longer. It is over a period of time. That leads me to believe it will be longer than the instant gratification that the medical kit will give you. So, as I said, I'm not able to test it because I don't have enough points to get any of this yet. Um, when I got on earlier uh, in the week, basically when I got on after, I, it might have been a new build of the beta, I'm not even sure. Um, I had something like 700-something certification points, something like that. So, I just went wild and took all the stuff that I personally use. Um, so, as you can see, now I only have seven, so I can't get these to test at the moment. Uh, right here, strong arm. You can throw grenades farther. So this is just throw greater, and then throw even greater, and then throw even greater than that. So 
could be useful. I find myself not using grenades that often. That being said, grenades are ridiculously overpowered right now. It's particularly a one-shot kill for infantry. On a minor side note, that's why they're not planning on bringing back the Thumper Grenade Launcher, which was in the Special Assault certifications of the original game. Because a grenade launcher here, um, unless they gave it a different ammo type, like a different kind of mini grenade, it would just it would be complete overkill, because grenades are basically insta-death for infantry at the moment. Um, right here you throw quicker for pitcher, and then throw even quicker, and then throw even quicker. So this is throw faster, this is throw farther, this is health over time, and this is instant health. Okay? Alright. Moving along, we can carry explosives. Um, I'm unaware what the other classes have here. I could look, but I'll do that later because this is the infiltrator only video. However, this will allow us to place EMP grenades. So. EMP grenades, you throw them, they blow up, EMP, um, I'm assuming that it will disable vehicle weaponry, there were jammer grenades in the original, which sounds like it would be kind of similar to this, so um, I can imagine it shutting down the enemy infantry's map, I can imagine it uh, shutting down the weapons of a vehicle, perhaps even shutting down the vehicle's motion entirely, um, I'm not exactly sure, again, it's not in the game, so I can't test it. The IFF grenades, um, these are brand new, and this is definitely more of a kind of niche spec ops kind of thing, but if you throw this, basically they'll still have their radar, however, all of the dots, the green dots signifying friendlies and the red dots signifying enemies, won't work. And when you mouse over people, I believe that their names won't be coming up anymore, or if they do, it'll be in one standard color, as opposed to the kind of bluish tint that we have now for friendlies, and the red tint that we have for an enemy. So, if you throw this, and someone can't recognize armor and silhouettes well, then this could cause a lot of friendly fire damage on the opposing side, which is always nice to have. Here we've got Bouncing Bettys, so just proximity mines, they'll pop up in the air, this gives you one extra one. Uh, bouncing Bettys pop up and then explode, so that could be good, definitely for defending certain points. Suit modifications, there are a bunch here. Um, active camo detection, you can see nearby cloaked enemies on the mini-map, not with your vision, just with the mini-map. This will increase the range, and this will increase, uh, let me see. Yeah, this will increase the range of the detection that you have from this, and this one here will increase the volume of other infiltrators' cloaking devices. They are not silent, they are meant to shield you from vision, not all of the other senses. So, if you are near someone that is cloaked, if you really listen and you have your sound on, you will be able to hear it. So, this will increase the volume of that so you can more easily hear even if you can't see them on the minimap from all of this detection, you'll be able to kind of hear and tell if they're near you. As long as the area is quiet, I imagine, because the suits are not that loud. Adrenaline converter reduces cooldowns, increases speed after kills. So, when you kill an enemy soldier, it'll basically fully recharge your cloak, is what I gather from this. Um, right here, this will reduce the tool cooldown. Now, the tool cooldown tool, I believe, is things like the med kits, like I was talking about earlier. They do have a cooldown. They will apply to your number three on your uh, bindings, if you have med kits equipped. Uh, your sniper rifle is one, your pistol is two, your med kits are three. That is essentially your tool. Um, there are other tools, I believe, if I... Yeah, here, Infiltrator Spec Ops tools, and I may be completely wrong about the medkit thing, it may simply mean these, because there are a lot of them. So, I may be incorrect, but, again, it's not something that I can test at the moment, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Um, but Killing Enemy Soldier will refresh that, and then Killing Enemy Soldier will let you run quicker. Advanced Shields this will basically just let you get your shield back quicker. It doesn't give you more shield, it'll just let you get it quicker. So, this lets you get it quicker, this is even quicker, this is even quicker, this is even quicker, and then this is even quicker. Now, they're all quicker, but it's quicker in different ways. The original one here allows them to recharge quicker. This reduces the amount of time before they start to recharge. 
This one increases the amount of recharge you'll get per tick. Every second, you'll get more shield than you normally would. This one here will kind of bounce back to what we did earlier, and this will reduce the amount of time until it begins, the cooldown essentially, and then this increases, the again, the amount you get per tick. So they're all going to make your shields come up faster, but in slightly varying ways. Not sure why they did that, but they did. I'm also not sure why these numbers are like this instead of just all nines like the others. I'm not going to question it because I don't have a clue why. Um, bypass proximity trigger explosives, so bouncing betties. So proximity mines and other tools won't detect you if you're cloaked and running, which is very handy if you're going to be stealthing. Um, I would take that if you were going with the cloaking kind of nano armor route that I kind of talked about earlier. Uh, proximity mines no longer detect while cloaked and sprinting. Again, words, context, running, sprinting. They're very different. Very different things. So don't let that confuse you. Don't let that trip you up. This will let you know when you are near them, so you'll at least know. You won't set them off, but this will let you know when you're near them. If you're playing with a squad, you'll be able to tell them, hey, there's a, there's something around here, you know, hang back for a second, and you can try and find it. So that's kind of useful. Um, you can detect nearby explosives with this, so this would pair up very well with this right here. Um, in enhances the heads-up display so that you can see them instead of just emits a noise when you're near them, you would just be able to see them outright. Um, increases the range and then spot enemy explosives. So I'm not sure to spot. Sorry. Again, context. Context is catching me here. In this game there is a key. I believe it's Q, but I don't actually know which one. It's probably not Q now that I think of it. What does Q do? Nope, it doesn't stra yeah, strafe is side to side A and D. So Q, I believe, is spot. Um, what spotting is, is if you spot somebody, then th you, everyone will be able to see them. There will be a little triangle in their name, and it will be pointing to them, even behind walls, behind obstacles, and things like that. So this will highlight them on your heads up display on your mini map this will increase the range of that and then finally when you do see it highlighted on your mini map and you look at it in the real world here you'll be able to spot it you'll be able to flag it essentially and everyone will be able to see a little uh, indicator a little triangle indicator pointing directly at it so that'll be very useful again kinda helping your team through minefields essentially this one right here, just reduce damage you take from explosions further, 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 and further. Mostly I got this, again, because as I said, grenades are very overpowered, so I just fully got that to try and cut down on how powerful they truly are. Grenade bandoliers, you get an additional grenade, additional grenade, pretty standard. Nanoweave armor, you can just take more damage, so your shield is a little better. Um, absorb more damage absorb more damage, more damage, more damage, more damage. So it's a very standard, very boring kind of flat statistic thing, but like the flak armor, it's probably one of the most useful because of that. It's helping you all the time. Melee booster, knife will be much better, so more melee damage, increased melee recovery speed, you can do it quicker, more damage, more recovery speed, and then if you do a melee kill with the knife, then your cloak will fully recharge. So I can see that being very good if you are actually a good cloaker, then you can chain kill with that very effectively. Moving on down to hacking, so we're almost done. After going through these, that'll basically be it for the video. Um, as I said, I have some personal thoughts. I've kind of been slipping in most of the comparisons throughout. So, probably when I finish going through these, that'll just be the end of it. Um, I mean, I can say immediately that it should not be named Infiltrator. The name of this should be named Cloaker, because this really doesn't become an Infiltrator class until you have... Uh, where is it here? The cloaking devices, stalker camouflage. Until you have the full set of stalker camouflage that we talked about, then you're not an infiltrator. You're just 
a sniper that can cloak momentarily to not give away your position. So that's my uh, that's my upsetness with that. I guess I don't feel like it's really an infiltrator. This is just a sniper, and it should reflect that in the name. But anyway. Let's move on down to hacking. We skipped ahead to cloaking devices earlier anyway, so we don't have that much more to go, really. Um, right here, just to let you hack quicker, there were certifications for all these things, by the way. Um, not everything, but things like advanced hacking and things like that, they were in the original game. But they're bringing them back in different ways, as you can see here. So, you can hack quicker, you can hack even quicker, hack even quicker, even quicker, and even quicker. So. It's definitely something nice to have. However, in the original game, when you hack, the only way to take a base really is you hacked the control console, and it either spawned an LLU, which was basically a flag. It was kind of like capture the flag. You then picked it up and carried it all the way to one of the bases that was linked to it. Um, there were linking and lattice network systems in the old game, which if you watch one of my old videos for Planicide 1, I talk about that. I'm not going to go into it here because it, it wasn't complicated necessarily, but it was a little annoying, and it's something that I they did away with for this game that I'm very glad that they did. Um, but basically, once you hacked the control console, you had to defend it for 15 minutes. If they hacked it back during that time, then they got it back. You had to just start all over. In this game, it at least gives the defenders a chance by having, oh, how many points do you control? Okay, that's how, that's how much your progress bar will increment every certain amount of time until someone's progress bar reaches completion and that team will get the base. So, I like the way they have it here better. Just saying. Um, two different things here. This is for control consoles only. This is for equipment terminals. So here we have, this will let you hack equipment terms quicker, 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 and again, quicker. So pretty standard, but the equipment terminal definitely will be very useful to have. You can replenish your ammo. It would be very useful with the stalker suit modifications that I talked about earlier. If you can get into an enemy base, get a couple kills, remain undetected, you can hack an equipment terminal and just replenish your ammo just right there. You might even be able to buy more med kits, for example, or more grenades, anything like that. So it would be very, very helpful for someone who was behind enemy lines frequently. Spec Ops tools, there is a lot of these. <laughs> I'm kind of sad none of them are in the game because I'm very interested to play around with some of these. Um, right here, EMP Spiker, damages nearby enemies, disrupts cloaked shields. So, disrupts the shields and enemy infiltrators cloaking. So they can't cloak, and they basically, I don't know if they lose their shield necessarily, but people's shields will be damaged slightly. So, reduces reuse, 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 and then reuse. So, just cooldown reductions there. Spiker amount increases basically the amount that you can carry. So you can carry two at a time, then you can carry three at a time. So it's a fire and forget kind of thing. You use it, it's gone. This will let you carry three total. Spiker range, increase range, 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 and range. Very standard. IFF device, identify friend or foe. So right here, it can be thrown to reveal Neo by enemies on the minimap. Um, right now, occasionally you can see enemies on the minimap, however, that's, that's very dependent on a lot of other factors that uh, I myself am even not sure what they all are right now. Um, I know in the original game there were scout aircraft that if they were flying at half of their total speed overhead, it actively engaged a very powerful air-to-ground radar, which helped reveal people to your team. Um, there were various other buffs and vehicles and things like that, and the movement amount and the speed you were moving that determined if you could be seen or not seen. I'm not sure how it works in this game yet, but this can be thrown so that you can see them, just without any argument. And then reuse timer, reuse timer, reuse, reuse, reuse. So just cool down again. Here, just carrying more, two, and then three. And here, range, just like the spiker. This is pretty much identical of the spiker. So range, 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 and range again. Okay? Now we get down to the scrambler. 
as you can see, this is going to be the same as all the others. So this disrupts their mini-map. This will let you see them on yours, and this disrupts theirs so they can't see yours. So this disables it. All of the rest are cooldown, making the cooldown reuse timer shorter. And then the amount, you can just carry more, two and then three. Range, increase, range, 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 range. Okay, so easy. All right. Now, weapons. Okay, so as you earn more weapons, I can imagine they will appear here. Right now, there is only the bolt driver and the mag shot pistol. There are no more available other than that. So there's different ammo types, as you see here. We cannot get any of those at the moment. Um, soft point ammo here. So this gives you more medium range, but you're not as accurate at long range. Okay, so that could be a thing. Velocity ammo increases it at range, but it also increases your recoil. This would be very useful for the NC because, as I'll demonstrate to you after I'm finished with this, the bolt driver is, as you can imagine, bolt action. It is single shot. Recoil really doesn't matter to us at all because after we fire, we need to reload the gun anyway. And by the time that we've reloaded, we're already back on target. So recoil really doesn't affect us at all to be perfectly honest. Anti-armor ammo, just like it says, um, you get more armor penetration at the expense of less damage against non-armor, basically meaning shield. And then this is kind of the opposite of that. This will give you more shield penetration, but then less armor penetration. Armor is essentially your health bar. In this game right now, you only have two bars. As you can see at the bottom right there, you see a little plus and a little uh, armor icon. The armor is the shield, and then the plus is just your health. So armor, I believe, factors directly into health. Shield is all by itself. Okay. So going back into the ammo types here. And then right here, additional magazines. So you can carry more ammo. You honestly don't get that much ammo. Um, if, you, if you're a bad shot sometimes like me and you tend to waste ammo for no good reason uh, like shooting at planes or max units just because you can even though you'll never get a kill on one of them with a fucking sniper um, this could be good for you because you're going to run out of ammo pretty quickly um, I'll just insert my personal opinion my personal opinion on ammo types here is always, always, always taking anti-shield ammo. My reasoning for anti-shield ammo over any other is simply because, well, you could go velocity. I'll, I'll say you could go velocity or soft point depending on what range you were working at, but as far as damage type, anti-shield, anti I would say you must take over anti-armor if armor is health, like I think it is, because there are so few ways in this game that you can get health. As a matter of fact, really, there's only three. Way number one, be a combat medic, then you can heal. Way number two, be near a combat medic, so they can heal you. Way number three, spec into either a med kit or restoration kit, and quick use it. Those have cooldowns, and they're not as reliable. You only have four of them, and that's at maximum certification. So, some people may only have one or two. Health will not regenerate. So, if they're damaged, then their health is going to stay that way. As far as shields go, though, shields regenerate passively, and depending on the certs you have, they might regenerate fairly rapidly, and their capacity might be a lot greater. So, getting through that variably big shield that will constantly recharge back to full, that's going to be a big deal. If you take something like any armor, you might not be able to penetrate that shield because it's probably regen to full capacity already. If you waste all your time getting through the shield, they may only have like 2 HP left, but if you don't get through the shield, it's not going to matter. So I would say always take anti-shield. Again, it's not something that I can test seeing as it's not in the game. So further critique on that as certifications permit. Um, the only barrel attachment you can get at the moment is a suppressor. As it says, allows the use of a suppressor. <laughs> really doesn't say anything else. Um, 
it's not stated here, but I do believe that the suppressor reduces the velocity of your bullet, therefore reducing the damage that you do if you have a suppressor equipped. It makes logical sense, and I believe that that is indeed how it works, but that isn't exactly what it says. So, I'm on the fence about that because I don't know. Um, I would have to either you know, try and hunt down some dev posts or look at the forums in order to see what other people's opinions on the suppressors are for the snipers. Um, muzzle brake here reduces vertical recoil, but it increases the sound that you make when firing. Again, if you're using the bolt action weapon, like the bolt driver, this is completely and totally useless because you don't care about recoil because you only get one shot before reloading anyway. So, it doesn't matter. It's just a nerf to yourself because it's going to make the sound of your gun firing even louder, which isn't what you want. Flash suppressor here, hide the muzzle flash, however it'll decrease your accuracy. I can see the uses of this for night fighting, but that's really it. Um, night fighting, it is very dark. It is incredibly dark. So, if, you, if your gun flashes up, you could easily give away where you are to everybody. Easily. Here's the scopes. All of these are just different magnifications. Scopes in this game are not variable. At least right now they're not. Variable scope meaning once you scope in, there is no zoom. It is a set magnification. So none of the scopes have any zoom at the moment. Um, there are no other scopes in here. Like up here you can see they've put stuff in that you can't get yet. Here there is no such thing. So I'm unaware if there will be variable scopes introduced or if this is going to be it. I'm assuming that there will be a lot more because five scopes seems like not a lot of customization. Right here though, this is the infrared night vision scope. And I'm gonna show you this because it is ridiculously overpowered. And just because it's infrared, I really don't think there's gonna be a way for them to fix it. Okay. Honestly, I believe all of the costs of all of these should be dropped lower, and the cost for this should skyrocket. Because, and, and as I said, I'm going to show you why momentarily after I finish this in the mag shot, because this is overpowered as fuck. Um, moving on down here, again, really none of these are useful. Hardly. So the laser dot gives you a laser dot. You don't need it because you're not firing the weapon from the hip. So why would you need a laser dot? You're scoping in. You don't need one. Flashlight? Well, if you're using the IR scope, you won't need a flashlight. And if you're fighting at night, you're not going to want to light up your gun, especially if you're a sniper. So that's pretty useless as well. Forward grip allows the use of a forward grip. Now, what that does, I believe it reduces sway. It doesn't say here. I believe it reduces sway. So that is helpful. It is helpful. Um, it may be vertical recoil, I'm not sure. If it is vertical recoil, it's a useless piece of crap. But if it's sway, that's pretty good. Very last one is the IFF scanner. This will show intel on targeted enemies, like how much health they have remaining, things like that. Um, in the original game, there was an implant called enhanced targeting. Basically, everyone had it, because it allowed you to see their health and their armor, their shield, which you couldn't see otherwise, you just saw their name. So, it was pretty much a must for everyone. Um, it's probably going to be the rail modification that I put on. Sadly, I'm not allowed to. But yeah. So let me go back up so I can close it, sorry. And then the mag shot. So right here, not a lot. Suppressor, muzzle flash audio range, laser dot, as you can see here, th see, these, these descriptions are much greater than in the ball driver. This has a suppressor, but it just says allows the use of suppressor. Mag shot, they give you the full description. So, they should add that description to the bolt driver because I'm assuming that it's the same thing. So, decreases muzzle flash and audio range. Handy, definitely handy. Again, I believe that will reduce your damage, though, even though it's not stated here. I believe it's implied, so you may want to check on the forums for that. I know I probably will. I'm sure I'll be doing an updated video of this easily at some point, because, as you can see, there's so much stuff that's not even in beta yet, and the game's already so good. Right here, laser dot, as I said earlier, basically when you're firing from the hip. So, 
reduces minimum cone of fire and then cone of fire recovery. You don't need that because you're scoped in. In the original game, when you scoped in with the sniper rifle, and you stayed still, there was no sway. You were just rock steady, just by default. So that was great. However, if you so much as twitched to the left or right or up or down, a single, just at all, a single inch of twitch would cause the cone of fire to just bloom outward to the edges of your scope. So, basically what I'm saying is that in the original Planicide 1, even when you were sniping, even when you were zoomed in, the cone of fire rules were still in effect. So, you could not pan sideways tracking a moving target and fire because that constitutes movement of your gun. If you are moving your gun, then your cone of fire blooms out to the size of your entire scope. Basically, your bullet could go anywhere in your entire screen if you pulled the trigger. In Planicide 1, there were two ways to hit someone. If they were sitting still, then you would move your crosshair over them and wait for the cone of fire to come to the center and then take your shot. If they were running, then you had to anticipate the rate of the cone of fire stabilizing, and you had to simply try and predict their path, mouse way ahead of them, and then sit there in place, not moving, while your cone of fire came down to the center, and just hope and pray that they were going to run across the path of your sights, and then hope that you led the target enough with your shot. So it was absolutely insane and ridiculous. It's probably the hardest sniping in any game ever, and I'm glad that now it's gone. So basically rant over laser dot useless don't take it flashlight again it illuminates dark areas and lets people see you don't take it it's useless okay so plenty of people using their weapons in here I may as well as well so cone of fire you can see there if I shoot reload shoot reload bolt action okay reloads fairly lengthy but you do have a 10 shot clip zoom in you can see that I'm swaying. There is sway. However, if you hold the sprint key, you stop the sway. Now I'm swaying again because I released it. So you can steady your breath. Now here's one thing that I dislike. I'm gonna shoot. Look at my ammo counter. Now, that happened. So if you click once on the fire key, it will fire. If I click on the fire key again, it will descope me and reload. If I fire and simply release right trigger, which is scope, it will do the same thing, and then I can manually go back in. So, you will not prime your next bullet until you disengage the scope. You must disengage the scope in order to do that. Okay? So, now, really briefly, I am going to cut the recording, and I will be right back. For you guys, uh, there will be no change. For me, however, I will probably be gone for half an hour or so, because I'm eating dinner with the family. So, for you guys, I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, thankfully, that was only a second or two for you guys. So, yeah. Um, really quickly, so... I was just showing off the sniper rifle, the bolt action of it, everything. Now I'm going to show you the thing that I wanted to show you in the first place. Customize. IRNV scope. Barrel. As you can see, I've taken off the suppressor. Now if I click suppressor, none of these change. So, either they haven't put it in or it really doesn't decrease the damage that you do because it doesn't go up and doesn't go down but I've just been leaving it off because honestly it hasn't mattered so I just haven't bothered to put it on I really just don't feel like I need it um, right here you get a better description of the forward grip than we did in the certifications decreases horizontal sway um, Again, though, since Cone of Fire, thank God, doesn't matter in this game due to common sense of being scoped in, um, there's no point in having this because you don't have a Cone of Fire unless you're firing a bolt-action sniper rifle from your hip. Um, 
and unless you have some serious mental problems, you'll never do that because that's stupid. So forward grip is just what I took because there's really nothing else to take. So even though recoil doesn't really affect us that much either, being bolt action, it's the best that I could do. But iron and eye vision scope, and then the pistol already has its stuff on, the laser dot and suppressor. Get a little space cowboy-ish kind of riff jam there anytime that you resupply. I don't know what that's all about. Um, but let's go outside because I want to show you why this is so freaking amazing. So let's just say I'm over here. For example, I'm right here. So if I zoom in now, now this is a night vision scope. As you can see, it's very clearly day. However, this is what it looks like. This is what it look likes. This is what it looks like during the day. Everything is just gray, black, and whites, with the exception of people, vehicles as well. As you can see, that's a galaxy over there, and it's lit up. But all of these people are just lit up like fucking Christmas trees up against a just black backdrop 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 background oh my god it's it's so amazing I'm just mixing up my words I'm so flustered but this is so good you can just if that was a hill I could just start here scope in and just slowly pan my way across the top of the hill and I would be able to see anybody hiding there unless they were cloaked, I would be able to see anyone. Like the tips of their heads, I could see anybody. It's so good. At night time, it functions the same way. However, since everything else at night is also very bright, um, this will take that into effect. So, if there were lasers and such like going across my vision right now, those would be pretty bright too. And if there was smoke going up in front of you, you wouldn't be able to see anything. However, you wouldn't be able to see anything normally anyway, so that's not really as much of a concern. Um, as you can see, though, you have sway, just like you would have in basically any other modern-day sniper. I began on his head, and now I'm slowly swaying my way back over. But if I hold shift, I basically stabilized rock steady on his head when I held it there. So... In my opinion, this is the best scope in the game. I'm fully expecting it to be nerfed, and if it's not, I can easily see everyone using this scope if they discover this, because I would gladly sacrifice any amount of zoom in order to have this amount of detection. Just being able to look up and say, oh, let's just scan the rise there. If I saw the slightest red-orange tint in this corner here, I'd be like, oh, there's somebody's head. Let's just kind of scope in and just fire around just right there. You know, let's keep on scanning. Oh, there's somebody right there. Let's just steady for a moment, fire around right through. So, I mean, and you can light up aircraft with it. Just everything is just so bright. It's... It's the best scope ever, I'm sorry. Best scope, 2012. Um, outside of that, though, if I scroll all the way down to 3, you can see that in my hand I have the medical applicator. Now, at the moment, as I showed you, let me go here really quick. Universal, open up, medical kit. Grants access, increases number. Increases number, increases number. Okay. Gotcha. So let's go to the terminal. Four. It very clearly shows the number four. Right here. Very clearly. I'll even hit resupply. But when I hit three, I only have one. If you look in the bottom right, I have one and nothing else. If I use it, there. Now I can no longer hit number three. I can still see the icon there, however, I cannot go to it. So either it is on cooldown, maybe all of the uses 
are tied into one single applicator. So the one slash blinking red zero really means I can use it four times if it's four uses for the one. Um, but the one slash flashing red zero means to me is that I only have one of them. I don't know if there was a cooldown period what it would be, but as you can see, if I'm mousing in the downward direction, I can't get to it. It just bounces back up to the first one. I cannot select it any longer. So, kind of buggy. Don't really think it works. As well, if you see in here, I'll look again, if it'll let me go in there. Um, right here, it says, you know, 3 slash 0. So, now I have a thought. I'm going to hit resupply. What does this say now? Let me in. Let me into the terminal. Back all the way up till it goes away. Come back forward. E. 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 Okay. Let's try a different one. E. There we go. Okay. This was three. It is now back up to four. Um, I still cannot select my applicator. So I'm unsure as to if it's a cooldown thing, if it's a global kind of thing that even resupplies don't instantly fix. Um, I also cannot get back into the terminal. As you can probably hear, I don't know why that is. It's incredibly annoying. This one lets me in immediately. One out of three grenades. Okay. Let me go out here where I know I'm not going to murder anyone. Gee. Poof. I have no more grenades. Zero grenades. Let's go back inside. Let's attempt to use the terminal. And this one is still... Oh, no, there we go. Zero out of two. Resupply. Come on, there we go. One out of two. So that two didn't change. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. I wasn't aware if that would change to a one and give me one here, if grenades were somehow global. I know that grenades and things like utilities are expected to take up resources eventually. It'll cost me resources to get more grenades and more medkits. Um, but I'm not sure what's up with the numbers this would lead me to believe that I have three grenades but as you can see I have one very clearly I have one and if I run out here and I throw it as you can see now I very clearly have zero I have no more grenades I hit F on accident instead of G and cloaked but so the UI and the usage of grenades and utility tools isn't fully panned out yet. It will be. I'm not very worried about it. Pistol, just to briefly go over. As you can see, I've got a 17-shot clip. I've got about 50 in reserve here. And I can fire pretty quickly. Reload is also very quick. Holding the button down, which I'm doing now, only fires a single shot. So, it is semi-automatic, which is good. So, I can very quickly fire a lot of shots. Now, I was consciously moving down slightly as I shot to compensate for the recoil. If I didn't, then you can very clearly see me climbing the entire building with that line of shots. However, I can hold it steady by going down as I'm shooting and keep them all relatively in the same location. Um, you can fire from the hip fairly accurately because I have the laser pointer equipped. However, I would usually always iron sight. There's really no reason not to. The iron sight is just, it's better. Yeah, you move a little slower, but the accuracy makes up for it, I feel. You can more easily aim for the head shots by iron sighting in. And since this game has localized damage, then you want to get head shots more than anything else. So we'll just resupply. But that's it. Uh, that is basically the end of my Infiltrator class rambling video. Quite long. 
However, I, go, I went, I wanted to go over all of the certs for the Infiltrator. That was kind of the point. <laughs> so, I apologize for the amount of time that it took. However, now hopefully you have a good idea of what the Infiltrator class is used for in this game. Hopefully you have some idea of what things are good and what things are not good. Hopefully I was able to teach you a thing or two, a couple of the little tricks I've learned over me playing this game so far. But yeah, um, hopefully this wasn't a colossal waste of your time. So, next up is going to be Light Assault. I'm not even going to click that now to give you guys a sneak peek. If you're already in the beta, you can look at it for yourselves. If not, then you'll just have to wait on me. Sucks to be you. So, I'm going to be back to this uh, pretty soon. I will definitely say that um, on Tuesday, Borderlands 2 is available. I pre-ordered this a long, long, long time ago. I will be digitally downloading it the day of, as soon as I can, and I will be playing the absolute shit out of it. The original Borderlands, I played over 200 hours played on Steam on the original game. I played it a lot. Um, for those of you who don't know what Borderlands is, or Borderlands 2 is, go look it up. Best game ever 2012, you should uh, totally buy it. Shameless advertising intended. Um, it's going to be really difficult on me, but I want to try and do a completely fresh recording playthrough of it. I don't want to play through it ahead off camera on my own time. That's going to be really hard for me to do. Um, so I'm going to have a lot of fraps footage to render because I'm going to be playing a lot. I'm going to be recording all I play. So... Hopefully I can still get all of these out with some regularity, even though I will be doing a lot of Borderlands 2. But, that's up and coming, and for now, as far as the Infiltrator goes for Planetside 2, this has been Legendary Narwhal, and I'll see you guys next time. Because that was it.